Hi there, Sacro Enthusiasts, and welcome to the first video of the Sacro Best Practice series. This will be five 10 minute long videos that will come out every week, every Friday, in which I will discuss a single best practice. We'll talk about the details, the reason behind the best practice, and the ways you can implement that in your solutions. There is a great amount of information out there about Sitecore, a lot of best practices recorded. However, it's all in written format, and I thought it would be a great idea to uh, put that in a visual format for visual learners uh, like myself. So let me know what you think about these series. Let me know what you liked, what you didn't like. This is the first video. So I'm looking forward to all your feedback. So don't hold back, okay? All right, so let's jump right in. In the first video, I want to cover the uh, Psycho Field help messages. And so what are these help messages? So Psycho provides a way to add additional information about a field in three ways. There is a Psycho help link, uh, short help description, and a long help description. So why is this so important that I decided to dedicate my first video to that? Well, what I find uh, very frequently, unfortunately, is uh, this is something that's gets, uh, that gets dismissed in Psycho implementations. However, it's very important, and I find there is a huge return on investment. Um, uh, by pop in populating these help messages. So first, uh, it reduces the amount of frustration and it reduces the uh, learning curve for content editors. When the new solution gets put out there, usually documentation um, is provided along uh, with the solution. Uh, we perform some kind of training. However, there's still a learning curve. Uh, there's usually about 20 to 40 percent of knowledge that sticks with content editors even after the training and most don't even bother to go through the documentation and they try to kind of figure it out as they go so the more the the more information we can give them in Sitecore as they use it the more uh, the more we can do to help them uh, better perform their job to make their experience better to increase the usability of Sitecore tools the better for us right another advantage of having Sitecore fields is I noticed uh, it decreases the amount of uh, contact that we get from the client and amount of frustration, amount of issues that they're having with the website. Right? So help information can contain uh, different types of uh, uh, messages, starting from just things that are good to know about the field to the things that are very important to know uh, about the field to avoid maybe even breaking the website if the validation isn't configured correctly. Right? So. Let's jump right in. So let's uh, let's look at uh, the fields that Cycro provides for us to do that. What I have here is an empty Cycro uh, instance. It's a clean install of Cycro 8. And this is the, the famous home node that gets installed with every Cycro solution. So let's go ahead and add a new field. Let's call it a logo. Let's, uh, let's say we want to display a logo on our website. And we'll make that an image field. Okay. Now you notice I didn't hit the save button. Oh. What is this? Oh. I've never seen this on a small screen. That looked broken. Huh. Okay. So, well, there goes the ticket cycle support. <laughs> All right, so you, uh, if you didn't see me hit the save button, what I did is I hit the control say uh, control S. Um, it's a combination. Sitecore uh, has a lot of um, uh, key combinations that are very helpful uh, in using Sitecore client editing tools. So this is one of the most used ones uh, in my arsenal. So we've created a new field and we named it logo, and it's an image field. Now let's look at the help information. So let's go ahead and navigate to the field, uh, field definition item. And first thing you want to do is make sure that you have the standard fields enabled. Uh, so the Sitecore help information is hidden by default because it's part of the standard values, uh, standard fields, uh, which are by default um, hidden from you. So after you check the standard fields, you can go ahead and scroll down in the right pane until you hit the help section, and here it is. Or what I usually do is, uh, especially when I'm working with uh, standard fields, because we have a long list to scroll through, I use this bookmark icon. And when you click on it, you get a list of all the fields um, on that item. So you can simply scroll to the field you're looking for, click, and jump right to it. There we go. 
Okay, so this is the help section. Now, as you can see, we have three fields that we can configure. Um, we have help link, long, short, long description, and short description. So what are these fields used for? Well, the, long, uh, the help link, let's look at that first. Uh, in my solutions, I usually use that for um, referencing web pages that contain relative, relevant information to the field that we're editing. So let's say if it's a logo field, uh, relative information uh, could be a link to, let's say, uh, design guidelines or to a web page that has uh, the allowed variations of the logo. If it's a rich text editor field, maybe it's a link to a web page that talks about proper content writing. Right? You don't see a lot of that in Cypher Solutions, but when, uh, when there is a page like that, uh, it be this field becomes very helpful. So for the sake of the demo, let's go ahead and add an external link and we'll just link out to Google. Oh, uh, Google. <laughs> All right. And what we want to do is make sure to configure that as a new browser. We don't want users to refresh the current page they're in because they're in content editor and we don't want them to lose the information. So we'll set that as uh, the, the target to open the new browser uh, or a new tab. All right, so that's the help link. Now, long description. So the information I usually put in the long description is uh, the information that's good to know about the field. So the information that's not of high importance, but rather descriptive. So things like uh, abbreviations will be uh, defined in the field. If there's an abbreviation using the field name, it will be defined in the long description. Uh, I would also include information about the field usage on the website and descri uh, describing the field's purpose. All right. So in our case, for instance, for the logo, I would put something along the lines of, well, let's say uh, logo is used on all pages. So this is uh, not the type of information that's very important to know, but it's, it's good to keep in mind when editing the logo knowing that it will be updated on all the website pages. Okay, And moving down to the short description field, now this field is what I usually use for specifying immediately important information to the user. So the information that is immediately important for the author to know when editing that field. Uh, the reason behind that is because the short description, as you'll see in a second, is displayed to the right of the uh, field name. and. Uh, Things that usually go in there uh, are things that are of very high importance and that can help users uh, uh, avoid negative, uh, avoid frustration or the element of surprise by running into validation errors or even breaking the website by uploading maybe images that are very big uh, in size or very large in dimensions. So, in our case, uh, an example of a helpful information would be specifying the dimensions or the suggested size of the image. So let's say our image is going to be 400 pixels wide by 200 pixels high. Now, as you notice, I included the short description in square brackets. What I found is sometimes when a short description is very short and it's not uh, uh, specifying the size or any other information, but where it's using a, a, a very short description um, in words, uh, users that aren't used to Sitecore usually confuse that with this, uh, being part of the field name. And I've, I've seen authors and um, editors referencing the field by including the short description as part of the field name. So to avoid that kind of confusion, I usually use square brackets for a uh, short description to clearly separate that away from, from the field name. So let's see how that looks. Save, Control S, and refresh the home item. Scroll down, and here it is. Here's our new logo field, and we have the short description specified. Um, now, as you can see, we can clearly see that the short description is not part of the field name. Uh, it's first, it's separated by the dash, but the square brackets really help um, add that extra edge to help separate that away from the field name. And we now know the suggested size. Uh, for the image dimensions and if we hover over it we see a tooltip that comes from the long description 
telling us that, hey, this logo is used on all pages, so keep that in mind when you edit it. It's going to affect the entire website. Okay, And you notice as I hovered over it, the field name became a link. So if we click on it, it opens a new window, which is exactly what we configured, and it goes to google.com. So this would be our, our hypothetical web page with design guidelines or uh, variations of the logo. All right. So that's what help messages look like in Sitecore. When it comes to adding the help information to fields, I don't do it across the board for all of the fields. I evaluate each field individually. So for instance, on the home item, we have the title and the text fields conf uh, configured by default. So looking at these two fields, the, the name of the field and the type of the field, it's pretty easy to guess what those fields are and, and, and how they're used on the website, right? With some fields, it's also very clear that they need help information. So fields that have, for instance, a lot of validation rules applied to them or fields that use abbreviations. But adding and evaluating that on, on, field, on field by field basis is sort of somewhat subjective. So what I do is I usually use uh, the rule of an alien from Mars. And that's the rule I used to use for website design before I started working with Sitecore. And what that rule states is if an alien from Mars were to land on a web page, and if in three seconds it couldn't tell what the web page was about, then the design failed. So the same analogy I apply to, to fields when I'm not sure if it needs help information or not. So if an alien from Mars were to log into your site, for instance, and look at that field, and if in three seconds it wasn't able to tell uh, what that field was about and how it was used on the website and what information should go in that field, then the field requires help information. I also try to add help information immediately after I create the template. I have two reasons behind that. So one is I can just forget to do that later. I've done that and I caught myself doing that. So I've learned. And reason number two is when you're creating the template, the information about the field and the fields used on the website is very fresh in your head. So it's much easier to add that help information early on as you're creating the template than later down the road where you might have to hunt for information. You might forget uh, how this field is used on the website and may have to fish for that information in specs, right? So it's just much easier and quicker to do it as you're creating the template. So there we go. So this uh, this was the configuring help, uh, help information for Sitecore fields and hopefully you guys found it helpful. Let me know how you liked the video. If you have any ideas, uh, send me feedback and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys next week. Over and out.